This week on the podcast, we're going to answer a question from a community. Now, if you know Jacko well, you'll know that he likes a little bit of alliteration. And that's not quite alliteration because it's a Q and a C, but it's a pretty good go for a Monday morning. <laughs> we're, this could go anywhere today. Jacko is in his camper van in Devon, coming yes. to you live off his hotspot. I'm at home. We've, we've got minimal script planned. This is literally as raw as it gets. Jacko, good morning. <laughs> uh, uh, good morning. Oh, well. and there's a delay. <laughs> Hey, but the 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 after production um, team will obviously they, they'll you won't notice delay as you as you're listening uh, to this because obviously we'll have uh, had that all sorted out. So what is uh, before we get into the question? Wait, I'm worried. I'm worried that the production team is going to is going to bin us off after this one today. <laughs> the production team might say no more. You know that other production team that's not definitely not me. <laughs> just just wet the appetite of like what's the um, what's the theme of, of of the question? Not necessarily the whole question. What's the theme of the question? Uh, that's a good point. I've got forgotten the algorithm. I? I've not told people what we're going to do in the first three seconds. Um, we're going to talk about training stimuli, our stimulus, and can you get multiple adaptations at the same time? This is a question that a lot of people want to know the answer to, and it's come from our great friend, Mr. Wesley Hyman's, and we're going to answer that for him today after we've told you about what an incredible opportunity it is to go and use all of those training stimuli in one superb event which is a spartan race yes we have got to obviously thank the sponsors of the podcast um spartan race and they have been lucky enough and grateful we're grateful enough because of their um uh, what's the right word what's the word i'm looking for um Generosity. Generosity. Yes. Now they've given fifty free spaces to come and join us at a Spartan race. Now there's starting to uh, not be many left, but you get to join us for free by simply uh, tagging or taking a photo or video of you training for a said Spartan race, and uh, tag importantly Spartan race. Um, sorry, hashtag Spartan race at Spartan, and then also tag us so we can see it, at Scorecast NX, and importantly, send this, send it to us in a direct message so we can see. We validate all of those things, and then we will send you the free code. Now, you can join any Spartan race that you want. Link is in the description of the, uh, of the podcast. You can do any one you want, okay? But it would be nice, if you can, to come and join us on the 16th of uh, July for the one in the Midlands. And we're doing... The morning race, there's a team called School of Calisthenics, obviously, and we're doing the 21K, aren't we, Timbo? Yeah, do you want me to tell you how my training is going for the said 21K Spartan race, the beast? <laughs> well, I'll be all right with the running bit, but I don't know that I'll be strong enough to pull myself across any of the obstacles. That's my worry. <laughs> Well, this is going to put a lot of people at ease because if you're worried about not having done enough training for such an event, don't worry because I have done none as well. So we're all <laughs> going to be in the same boat. I have just continued doing what I've always been doing or what I've been doing in recent times and done nothing in specific. I have done no running, well, we literally no running. We so could, that is where I'm at. We'll do an episode on the podcast afterwards of like how good is CrossFit training and calisthenics for Spartan multi uh, races and you'll get to see. Shall I let you into another secret? Go on. I'm not doing that much CrossFit either at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, w let's save that for another day about how I am strategically not preparing <laughs> for a Spartan race um, as a 41-year-old male with a significant, still remaining level of audacity <laughs> what I think my natural athletic ability is. Let's call um, it a taper. But call we're going to go with it because it's... Yeah, tape. I've been tapering for the last two years for an event that I didn't know that I was doing. Um, anyway, I will look good. That, the important thing is I might look in pretty good nick, which is going to be important around kilometre one and less important if I can't make it to kilometre 22.21. But anyway, we're getting bogged down in introduction here, Jacko, yeah. as usual. Let's get into the answering the question from Wesley about different training stimuli, because I think a lot of people have this question these days, because everyone yeah. wants a bit, everybody wants a bit of everything, so let's tell you how to get a bit of all of that and what the opportunity cost is. Roll that jingle. Listen. Players, <laughs> you're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. 
So, Timbo, you are officially question master for this one. You have the question. Um, let's hear it. Well, I'm going to paraphrase it for you because it's uh, otherwise it's a bit long-winded. But basically, the question from Wesley is that he understands that you can get different adaptations through different stimuli. Okay, first rule of training is going to be specific adaptations to impose demand. You get what you train for. So, if you lift heavy, you get good at lifting heavy weights. If you run long distances, you get good at running long distances. The body will respond to the stress that you place upon it. So what Wes's question is, is, is it possible to get different adaptations within one week? So let's say he's got five days to train. Can he do some endurance type training on a Monday and Friday, some hypertrophy on a Tuesday and Thursday, and some power strength training on a Wednesday? He says, this is the bit that I like particularly, and I'm just going to put it in there. But is the body going to be able to recognize the stimulus, or is it not worth setting up a training week like this? And it's better to, therefore better to do different blocks of specific training where you might focus on one thing like just going to do an endurance block just going to do a hypertrophy block yeah. and those might be six to eight to twelve weeks long now jacko i know that you will lean on my um detailed and expert understanding of the science of periodization <coughs> loose um but i'm gonna let you go first with your let's go for some general context that will probably resonate better with the people than when i start banging on about boring stuff that's in textbooks that nobody wants to read. Now, um, I, think I was thinking, there's a song that springs to mind. I know I started last week's podcast with a song. Um, <laughs> it reminds me. It, it, remi- it reminds me of um, Baz Luhrmann's Wear Sunscreen, where it's like the long-term mm. benefits of... And, and so, basically, I'm going to give you just some um, a per- some personal experience, and, and Tim's going to give you the science. Um one to, so, and I'll use. I'll. It's it's good actually. Sorry to interrupt you, yeah. Jacko. It's no. good to do it this way around because if I go first, it'll be a very short podcast. <laughs> but that's just I'm wetting the appetite for what I'm about to say. Yeah, perfect. Um, and 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 another little bit of context and to show that there's more than one sort of question. But another someone else had sent a message and got got deep into the algorithm actually because this was literally just over the weekend. Um, hi, Jacko, Tim, long time SOC podcast admirer tick okay um they didn't actually say what their name was on instagram it's intermittently underscore fast so if you are admirer shout out yeah uh, admirer it's nice isn't it? and it's a it's it's not mm. exactly the same question but the context is the same for what i was gonna just wanted to share from a personal experience and they basically were like oh i've been getting into some like long distance running as well started with some like 5k runs etc um but i love doing calisthenics as well how do you do muscle ups and all that type of stuff um, still maintain like an athletic sort of like look to the body. So there's that element in their mind going as well, but do all that running. Um, and sort of, uh, I felt it's just a bit weird. Personally, I felt a bit bad sort of writing it, but I was like, I just have, this is the, this is my truth. And this is just honestly, I was like, you can't, I was like, I am nowhere near as strong as I was at things like pull-ups or whatever else as strong now as i was a year ago or probably two years ago because i'm not doing as much of that and i'm doing more running and you can't have everything and i haven't done a muscle up in months one because i ain't got anywhere to do them we've talked about this before um but two it's just not a priority right now for me to be able to i still do some handstands and stuff like that but my training is more based around like simpler calisthenics movements we're still working like base level stuff but I'm probably just going, I'm edging towards some more strength endurance work, not maximal strength stuff. So I can't, I, I'm aware that I can't have it all. I've fallen into the trap many times before, like trying to have it all. And you just make very little progress on anything. Because I've start, I've signed up to do a, a stupid ultra marathon event. And I've been running up a few hills a few months ago going, um, yeah, this is hurting and all that extra weight on your biceps is not really helping right now, is it? <laughs> so it's almost like... And then seeing really skinny people just floating up hills, you're like, uh, probably... It's, and then I'm like, probably could do it losing some weight. But then I'm like, but I don't want to don't want to lose weight. And then there's this battle of like, oh, I don't want to be skinny, but then I don't want to be heavy. And it's like, you can't have everything. And I think it's a nice little element breathing on from one of the podcasts we did recently where you were talking about... I would... Yeah, go on. Well, I was just going to say, but you were talking about... Look, um, just train how you want to train and what you want to do. This is the delay, Jacko. This is the delay. This is the camper van delay. (laughs) (laughs) Let me. All I was saying was that just this is the editing department not going to like this one. (laughs) That your 
you said something the other week that was like, I just need to do what I enjoy doing in training. And like, how my body looks afterwards, like, that's just how it looks. That's, and that's fine. I think there's a nice ring to that um, message as well. This is aside from the question, but will you feel, do you feel that you will enjoy how your body looks when you have got your, those short shorts with the high side split and those endurance type looking legs? You know what I mean? <laughs> I am going for a training methodology based on something I heard um, Brian McKenzie say a while ago that after 10 miles, all that happens is your body is just chewing up your own muscle. So he was like, he's done an 100 mile ultra mm. based on never running more than 10 miles in training. He'll have done a lot of 10 miles, presumably, in training, maybe like for every day for however, or what, I don't know. But the idea, and, and he was saying, like, actually, if you build more strength, then you've got a little bit more base to lose rather than before you completely break down. Um, so I'm going for a little bit more of that, and uh, and we'll see. Um, rather than doing like an absolute insane mm. amount of um, mileage, but maybe we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so yeah, you can't have everything. But the flip side, the caveat to it, from just personal experience, when playing rugby, and I was lucky enough to play in a professional environment where we had all of our training laid out and done for us, we did do endurance we did do repeat sprints we did do agility we did do strength we did do power and we also did all of the rugby training as well so and that would be in literally in one week we would do a whole host of those things now all that meant was as a rugby player you needed an element of those um th those those abilities so you train those men modalities but you're not the greatest distance runner. You're not the greatest repeat sprint ability. Like you're not the strongest. You're not the most powerful, but you're an accumulation of those things because that's what that sport provides. And I think when I flip that round to go now, well, now we're just training for like for life, really, going, well, what do I want to be able to do rather than like what that is going to be like in terms of like from, from a, what we were doing from rugby. Um, I just use that example because we both know that. Um, and then just building your training around that, which ultimately comes back to what you said in the other the other week in the podcast. Again, like, well, do what you enjoy doing a lot of, not not to then shy away from things that are going to make you better that you still need to do. So it's like a weakness thing, but um, focus a little bit on that. Unless you're, um, you know, you're training as a, you know, uh, who knows? There may be the odd professional athlete that listens to our podcast, and then they obviously can't go into training and say, hey. Tim and Jack, I just need to do what I want to do. So I'm doing bicep curls today. <laughs> and they're like a swimmer. And you're like, mm, maybe not. <laughs> Probably not. Um, just think, let's just maybe just cover off that sports one. If, yeah. if anyone's listening who is playing a team sport and thinking about what that looks like. It's extremely difficult for most people in season to get significant gains. Because you've got this issue around training and recovery um, from match play as well. So typically in season, from a sports performance perspective, we're looking at maintenance. You might get some incremental gains when you, depending on what the fixture layout is like. But if, say, that, for example, if you're training twice a week, you've got a game at the weekend, and that would be anything from, like, you used to train twice a week, Jack, on the pitch, right, I guess? Uh, on the field, no. Three you, times, yeah, four times, how more, many times yeah, a week? maybe, like, four on the field or something like that. Yeah. So to being able to kind of maximize those, what we would call technical sessions, you don't want to go and smash yourself in the gym so that you then actually can't perform the technical element of the, of the sport or you're then tired for a, for a weekend. So this would be a typical one for rugby players would be like, when do you train legs? Because you, you might train, you might play Saturday or Sunday, you do your legs, you then got a, probably a relatively harder training session at the beginning of the week, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, because you're then going to try and taper down for the weekend. So you just got this kind of constant thing of like, when are you going to do this high, higher intensity work? So just bear that in mind. And that's typically why uh, the pre-season element for sports teams will be important because you're just going to try and bank as much as you can in the beginning, early phases where you're not playing or you're in your pre-season fixtures. Mm. And then you're looking to basically maintain that and nudge that along for the rest of the season until you repeat the process of following year. Jack, any closing thoughts on that before I move on? Um, something you've mentioned, a phrase you've mentioned before, minimum effective dose during the season is is what's like a, a really good SNC coach is going to do with you. Um, and as always, there's 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 um, there's the odd like sort of freak performance in there that um, we we did have guys um, like PB in on a few things like 
back squat and stuff like in season. But that would be someone that's like not getting ap- not forwards. Like it tended to be someone like a fly half or something like that, where mm. you know you've not been hammered all <laughs> all game and um, you're not carrying loads of niggles and stuff. Because some sometimes it was it'd be a case of like not even just maintenance. It'd be like just put the body back together as best as possible before the following mm. game the week after. Um, but it depends on people's um, people's competitions. They may, be, they may, may be perform weekly. I mean, I always think of things like, you know, ice hockey, and they play like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or they play at least twice at a weekend. I'm like, how yeah. the hell do they do that? But yeah. And then you've got other baseball, people. They play 120 games a season. <laughs> 120 games. How's your potato cut? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it's all right because sometimes you don't even hit the ball, and that's okay. So that's part of the sport, actually. If you hit it, that's actually an anomaly. Um, there's, there's been a minimal expectation to actually hit the ball. I've been to a baseball game once. It's really boring. Um, oh, gosh, that might rub some people the wrong way. Um, and right, okay, let me get into a little bit. Of, so that's kind of, that wasn't your question, Wesley, but we thought we fancied answering a bit about sports performance because that's what we know. So now let's talk a little bit more about general, general population approach to periodization. So the short answer, and we are now 15 minutes into your, to your question, is yes, you can train multiple stimuli at the same time. And the simplest thing that I can do for you in this one is just tell you that it all comes at a cost of well, you're basically trading off against the, the, what you would get if you just did one big block of trading. So what I mean by that is if you're going to go and do hypertrophy training, because it's probably the best example I can give you. If you do one or two days of hypertrophy a week, that will give you something, but it won't be as good as if you were doing five days of hypertrophy a week. And that sounds like really simple and probably you like, yeah, it's obvious to him. But with hypertrophy, one of the biggest things you need to do is get volume in. So we need to be hitting between 10 and 20 sets per muscle group per week at an appropriate intensity. So if, you, if you're if you kind of getting four sets of eight in on the chest and on a, on, a, on a Tuesday and doing another four sets of eight or five sets of something on a, on a Thursday and you wanted to try and do a whole total body split, like it's just going to be difficult for you to accumulate the kind of volume that you need across the week. Now, let's throw on top of that, you go and do some endurance work on a Monday, Friday. Well, you've got to, for hypertrophy to work, you've got to be in a calorie surplus. So you need to be making sure that you're eating enough to offset what you're going to go and do from an endurance perspective, where you might go and chew through five, 600 calories in a workout. Or if you're doing super distance stuff, you could easily go and chew through a thousand. That's going to be potentially detrimental to your hypertrophy gains because the body won't build muscle unless you're in a surplus. The power stuff kind of fits in fine with that, right? So maximal strength is kind of more like a neural adaptation with the power stuff on top of it. So when you do that, how that fits in depends on the level of of fatigue. So if you are wanting to do something like that, like a mixed um, mixed phase training, we often call it like a conjugate phase or sorry, concurrent phase where you've got multiple things operating or, or targeting at the same time. The best thing you can probably think about is maybe splitting those into trying to get two adaptations that are complementary around the same time. There's no reason, like in sports, as Jacko said, you might have an endurance type day at the back end of the week. At the beginning of the week, you might do max strength power stuff when in theory you've had a rest day and you're a bit fresher. You might throw a hypertrophy session in. Like Those sorts of things work quite well. The strength adaptations work quite well. So power and maximal strength at the beginning of the week, maybe go hypertrophy and strength endurance towards the end of the week. The endurance type work, though, how you're doing your conditioning stuff is going to need to fit in a little bit strategically around that because you probably would want to be doing that again at strategic times during the week. But realizing that all of that stuff in the same week is just going to be detrimental to any individual um, adaptation that you're going to get from a specific stimulus. So to wrap all of that together, yes, 100% you can do it. The body will respond how you strategically put those together is going to determine how effective it is and just be realistic in that you are not going to get as strong from doing a, a concurrent type approach. We've got lots of things going on than you would do if you were just doing four sessions of maximal strength lifting a week and a fitness session, for example. It's, so it's just, just the trade-offs. Um, so it's down to deciding whatever you want, how you want to mix it, how important those adaptations are to you and just know that you are going to get what you train for and the optimal way is needs to fit what you want basically jacko did i do a decent enough job on explaining all that yeah no um it, it, it's I, I always like the way you you explain things um 
clearly, even even if you think, oh, it's going to be science and people are going to be confused and some, it's not. It's it's clear, and it made it just made me think. Then towards as you were coming uh, towards the end, then I was thinking like, well, if I break in my mind, I sort of break down an example. Go like, well, what do what do we reckon a, an Olympic weightlifter does? He doesn't like go swimming. He doesn't go like cycling because it's just he's going to focus purely, or he or she is going to focus purely on like literally like the Olympic lifts. They'll probably the the training becomes very narrow the better you want to be at just one thing and it actually makes me think of like the um podcast we did with the we move guys about like be more of a generalist well then that's because you like doing lots of different things it, you get we always say this don't we like you get what you train for um i had one tiny thing to add into the um calorie surplus element um which i call the ross edgley diet um, everyone saw what happened to Ross Edgley as he swam <laughs> around the UK. He got bigger <laughs> and he was swimming 12 hours a day. Um, and it's a case of like, uh, at the weekend I ran 40 miles and, um, you just eating as you're training is the, um, is, is the secret and eating. Um, it's one of the things I love about um, doing lots of running is, uh, eating a lot. <laughs> it's just like snack time just constantly. Eating. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. If I wrap this up, Wesley, with a little bit, I'm talking Wesley now directly, but it's anybody who's listening and finding this interesting. If I wrap this up with a little bit of kind of what I would do as a person not training for a specific sports objective, but looking for a more concurrent type approach to my training. So I'm not kind of like just all in. So I don't like just doing strength work these days because it makes me feel like I'm not fit. I don't like that. So I'm having some level of conditioning. So I'll typically, at the moment, thread through one primary strength focus throughout my week. So that will, at the moment, be some general kind of conditioning type base level work around general preparation phase with a lean towards hypertrophy rep ranges because I'm basically building towards some more max strength stuff and just coming through a, a slight adjustment in my training. So I'm typically working six to 10 rep ranges three to five sets at the moment probably training five times a week but one to two of those sessions will be a purely conditioning based focus so as in my conditioning i mean fitness so at the box that i train at now there's a intervals based session three times a week and i'll drop into one if not two of those depending on what the week looks like and it is just a combination of like moderate intensity erg stuff so like conditioning pieces on rowers and bikes and um, ski ergs, that sort of thing, some running involved in it. There'll be some body weight stuff involved in it. There might be some kettlebells, some dumbbell work. It's just like a big kind of standard CrossFit style hit type move, um, class, but without any of the complex movements in there, like Olympic lifting and, and gym, gymnastics, calisthenics, that sort of stuff, other than like pull-ups pull typically. So what that means is that I can focus on the one major obje objective, but I'm going to supplement it with the other stuff, which makes me one, feel good, but also makes me kind of make sure that I'm kind of just keeping these other the other balls in play. What I don't typically try and do is have a max strength or power type focus at the same time as a hypertrophy focus and then try and stay fit at the same time because I just can't get that amount of volume in during the week. I feel like something doesn't get the, get, doesn't get the focus that it needs. And the, the landing point on this one for me is that I take a much longer term view on my, on my training now. So rather than trying to get all of this in the next six to eight weeks, I typically now think about six months. So rather than kind of going, um, I want all of these things now, I'm kind of thinking, how do I get a couple of these things now with a view to lay in the foundations to get better results from the next phase? So to give you my last final example, if you build more muscle, bigger muscles can produce more force. Therefore, if you go into a maximum strength phase, you've got basically a bigger tank to play with. So hypertrophy is useful in building more max strength. If you build more max strength, you get more power adaptations because neurally you start to do better work around priming the system to then go and be explosive. So you can have these themes as you go through, but... If you're doing a max strength block, there's no reason why you can't throw a cheeky front pump in on a Friday if that makes you feel good. Like, just realize that you are not going to turn into a bodybuilder by doing that. And let's be say, like, you can then also, sorry, I'm going down a rabbit hole now. I didn't think okay. I was going to do this. But you can also get bigger from max strength training. So just because it's five reps and not six doesn't mean you're not going to get hypertrophy gain. Powerlifters are pretty big people. And there's benefits of working across that rep range. So like five or six reps is pretty good. And 12 to 15 reps is also pretty good for hypertrophy. So you really don't start diving into the detail. And I hope if, if, that, if that sounds confusing, go back to what I said first and make it simple. 
and then understand that, get that nailed down first, and then you can move to kind of a, a bit where you're really starting to kind of play a little bit more with reps and sets and variables and, and that sort of thing. Um, for those people that want a bit of a mixed approach, it's possible, Jacko, isn't it? I'm going to tease it and put it out there. Yeah. We might have something coming <laughs> for you which might be of interest in the yes. future. Keep your ears peeled. Ears peeled or eyes peeled? What is yeah. it? Yeah, eyes ear, peeled. Eyes peeled. Not ears. Ears, ears pricked. Your ears. Keep, keep your ears to the ground. Pricked. Ears pricked. Eyes peeled. Whatever it is, this might be something coming which might be helping a little bit as to this regard in terms of people that want some more structure to their training program designed by people who maybe have got a bit of skin in the game. You heard it here first. That's just to make be crystal clear. The scorecard thanks for bringing that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they would never have guessed that. <laughs> they would never have guessed it. We were at some point when it's ready going to be launching a weekly training uh, designed program that people just literally go to the gym and go, right, what have I got on this week? And here's reps and sets. They would never have thought that I was talking about that. Yeah. I reckon you should put that in an app, Tim. That would be good, wouldn't it? If it was straight onto somebody's phone. Anyway, but with no set timeframes <laughs> as of yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can't commit to that yet. But coming soon. And I hope that's been useful coming soon yeah so yeah i hope that's been I mean, if anyone's got any other questions off the back of that this is a massive subject and it really it, the easiest way to go is it just it depends but understand that you, the real basic principles as a recap you get what you're training for if you try and do everything at the same time you, you it's like my niger i normally use that blackjack right you're playing lots of different hands at the same time you're not you spread betting so you're not putting down all of your cash that you've got onto one hand therefore the wins that you get are going to be smaller and sometimes you lose rather than winning the best way to play jet blackjack to get the best amount of return is probably to put the most amount of money down a single hand because you're going to be betting more on a single adaptation but that's not what we always want so just accept that spread betting is useful but you got to kind of maybe do it with the expectation or be realistic about what you're going to get. And, Done. And to, 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 to finish on a quote from uh, Billy's girlfriend um, in White Men Can't Jump, sometimes when you win, you really lose, and sometimes when you lose, you really win. <laughs> Deep. You must have seen White Men Can't Jump. <laughs> hey, Billy! It's of course so stupid, I have. Billy! Um, anyway, on that bombshell. <laughs> Let's sign us off, Tim. That's enough of that for today. Until next week, keep exploring your physical potential with movement, strength, and play. Class dismissed. Dismissed. <laughs>